Hi, my name is Juan Carlos and I'm a software engineer. And if you click this video, you're probably trying to bootstrap a new React project for a website you're trying to build. Maybe it's your personal website like it was for me. I spent the last couple of weeks trying to figure out how to do this and I applied it to my website that is now up and running. The sheer amount of information that's out there can certainly be overwhelming. So in this video, I wanna share with you how that learning process looked for me and I'll share the fundamentals that helped me get up and running. So how do you create a new React project? If you look that up online, it's very likely that one of the first things you'll come across is this thing called Create React App. This video intends to shed some light on three things after you come across this utility. One, the basic structure of a React tool chain like the one Create React App gives us. Two, Node and the different terms you're gonna you're gonna probably hear when reading up about setting up a new React project. And three, some of the packages and libraries that were useful to me as I got started with React. What I won't really get into in this video is on teaching React itself. I think there are a ton of really good resources out there for that. So I will leave some of my favorites down below that you can follow once you have set up a good project as your foundation to work on top. Okay, so let's take a closer look at Create React App. Like I briefly hinted before, what this utility does is creating a toolchain for us. Now, what exactly is a toolchain? You can think of it as a set of tools or utilities that work uh, combined with one another to complete a more complex development task. A common JavaScript build toolchain, like the one Create React App gives us, usually consists of three things. A package manager, like Yarn or NPM, and these will allow you to easily consume and manage your dependencies. A bundler like Webpack and Parcel, and these will allow you to split your code into modules. And then when it's time to serve your application, well, it literally bundles it into an optimized package. And finally, a compiler. And this will allow you to write modern JavaScript code while still getting the benefits of serving a compatible version with older browsers. If you wanted to create your own React project toolchain, you could technically create a new empty uh, node project and begin adding these components yourself, but it's not really my intention in this video, so let's pick up where we left off with Create React App. The actual command that you run to execute this utility looks like this. But before running it, let's take a step back to not only install the necessary software so that your computer understands this npx command, but also to give a brief overview on some of the concepts about Node. If you're really new to web development, you'll quickly realize that for many modern frameworks and utilities, you'll need to have installed something called Node.js. Formally, I would introduce Node as a JavaScript runtime built on Chrome's V8 JavaScript engine, but I find it useful to just think of it as an environment that takes the capability to understand and execute JavaScript code out of the exclusivity of the browser and lets you use it so you can build standalone applications. React depends on Node to work, so we'll have to install that first. The recommended way to install Node.js is through what's called a version manager. For macOS, there's NVM, which stands for Node Version Manager, and for Windows, there's an alternative called NVM-Windows. I'll leave some links down below for you to get those installed. Node by itself is not enough though, we'll also need NPM. Usually these two go hand in hand, but I think it's worth noting the difference. Node is the environment that understands and executes your JavaScript code, and NPM is a package manager. That means that it will allow you to easily install and keep track of libraries you'll probably need during your development. Usually when you install Node using NPM, you'll also get NPM, so I wouldn't worry too much about this. Okay, let's finally take a look at this npx command. npx is a shortcut command that allows you to execute Node packages without the need to install them globally. This is essentially telling Node that you don't really want to download and install Create React app uh, globally in your computer, but you really only want its usefulness temporarily. Since what you're really interested in is the outcome of that command, meaning your configured React project, you don't really need to keep around the utility that generates it. Node can get it from the internet a couple of times you find yourself creating a new React project, so that's why we use MPX. Okay, so at this point you should have all you need to run that command, so 
go set up that project and I'll meet you back here to talk about some useful libraries to get you started. First up, Bootstrap. Depending on what you're building, it can be very useful to have a UI framework. Now, in my case, for my personal website, I wasn't really gonna be building very complex user interfaces, but something that was a must for me was a modern grid and a responsive design. While you can definitely do this with Mirror, Flexbox, and CSS, I wanted some convenience here, and I was already familiar with Bootstrap, so I decided to consume that for its sizing classes. Next up, React Router. It's not uncommon for you to be needing more than a single page in your React application, and if that's the case, you'll probably need some way to route them. React Router does just this. It allows you to map paths to the pages that you wish to render for them, so it was really useful for me. And the third and final recommendation is Helmet. React Helmet allows you to modify HTML tags in the output of your React application. It is especially useful to customize the head section of your different React router pages. And in my particular case, it was really useful to be able to set up Google Analytics. And that's all I had for today. Hopefully this helped you navigate the sometimes overwhelming volume of information when you're just getting started with React. I'm always learning myself, so feel free to jump uh, down in the comments below and leave me a suggestion or what you thought about the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.